Hello and welcome to Exploited Crimes and Technology. My name is Opal Singleton and I'm the host of your show. We come to you every Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock right here on AM 590, The Answer. Well, what an amazing weekend I had this last weekend. I had the just incredible pleasure of meeting a lot of our listeners. And that has never really happened before. That, uh, what they call a town hall called Unite IE that is taking place over at the Doubletree Hotel at the Hilton uh, in conjunction with AM590. And they had had them in the past. It was actually uh, organized originally by a guy named Don Dix. And uh, Don passed away not too long ago with uh, health issues. And I remember going to lunch with him back in 2011 as he was kind of trying to figure out how people should get organized and stand up for their rights and like that. And he was one of the first people to encourage me on in my, uh, as it's turned out to be a career, I never meant it to be a career, I'm retired and this is just keeps on rolling. It, it's uh, an amazing thing. Um, I met him back then and he he was telling me, and I remember his commitment to really educating the public about the truth so that they understand what's happening politically and socially. And we had a lot in common and I really appreciated his input. Uh, if I remember right, my pastor went to lunch with me at that same day. It's been kind of a interesting thing. I think I never intended to go into me personally here, but I actually retired way back a long time ago and started to get into human trafficking because my church had a mission in Cambodia. And uh, so I started going to Cambodia and I'm a glass artist. So I started selling my artwork to pay the way. And uh, then in 2010, I met the folks with the Riverside County Sheriff Department and uh, amazing people. I, you will find that I am their biggest fan after having worked with them for 12 years. Uh, I know they're up for re-election, one of them, the head guy there, and uh, he's got my vote, but you have to make your own decisions and come to your own conclusions. But I've worked with that sheriff department for 12 years, and I'm very, very proud of all of them. Uh, yeah, they just had a couple of big cases uh, that I should announce. Maybe at the next break, I'll, I'll get them and announce them. But we are one of the few task forces in the United States that literally doubled the size of the task force back when everybody else was cutting back the the uh, funding for law enforcement. And that's because we need it. We need it right here in Riverside. Riverside County is 7,500 square miles. And we have all different kinds of trafficking, including labor trafficking. We don't hardly ever talk about that. But we do have labor trafficking here where people are brought in, usually from foreign countries, and they're forced to do work where they don't get paid. Uh, or maybe they're holding their password, a password, <laughs> how do you like that one, holding their passport and uh, and also maybe threatening their family back home and not giving them full amounts of pay and charging them enormous fees for uh, the various things that they get. And that is called labor trafficking. So we have sex trafficking, like in massage parlors, uh, gangs, you know, well, uh, lure in young girls and and put them out for forced prostitution. We have all kinds of sex extortion where our kids send naked photos online and they get blackmailed. And and some of those photos, as I talked about in the last couple of weeks, end up in child pornography rings. And they are distributed all over the world. So we have all of that right here in Riverside County. So we have our set, which is ran out of the district attorney's office. And uh, they're, they're just incredible people over there. And they're the ones that are doing a lot of the online uh, child sexual exploitation cases. We also have, have a group. I'm not connected to them. I'm just a a, an admirer of them, a group out of Fontana with Chief Green over there and set up to do child sex crimes online. And he, uh, the the Homeland Security is right here in the Inland Empire looking at child sex crimes. So our county, both Riverside and San Bernardino, are just amazingly blessed to have tremendous 
law enforcement commitment to be able to do this. Well, so what happened back to um, my story here is Don Dix put together an organization called Unite IE. And once a year, they, they've missed a couple of years because of COVID, but once a year, they all meet over at the big conference center, convention center over at the um, Hilton, it was, and uh, over in Ontario. And Normally, I would never get to exhibit in a place like that. I can't afford that kind of thing. When I get money, we either are trying to get a film out, still working on that deal, or we use it to help find missing and runaway kids, or we use it to educate and inform the public, including this radio show. And we also use it to you know, educate in schools and, and provide uh, support to get people out to get the victim services and like that. So when I met Don and he was telling us he was putting this together, this time um, we had Kathy DeHart of DeHart Construction, an amazingly generous family. Uh, Elise DeHart is their daughter, and she has done some volunteer work with me and kids. Anyway, they said, we have a booth anyway, an exhibit anyway. Can't, would you like to use it? And so we sat up there, and what an incredible day it was for me. You know, I've been doing this radio show, hard to believe now, but it's over five years. And uh, I remember the day I walked into the studio, I was I was laughing with my producer recently. I just froze up. I was terrified. I thought, what in the heck are you thinking? But I was thinking that People in the public need to see the world as it is, the reality of what's taking place when things of child sexual exploitation or child pornography or human trafficking. And so once I got over my fear of being on the air, and I still get that every now and then, but once I got over it and the producers at AM590 helped me get the confidence I needed to really come on and share with you what this is all about, you know, don't you don't really realize what it's like to be on the air in radio. I do this. Uh, I used to do it at the studio, but now I do it from my home because technology allows it. And you're sitting here looking at a mic and a, a timer and you're saying, what the heck am I doing? And you don't, you're not able to realize the people that you're talking to out there. And this conference allowed me to meet a lot of you people and how proud I am to know you. Uh, it just uh, blows me away that you would come up and go, oh, I never miss your show. You know, I, I put it on my computer if I'm not in my car. And I just uh, I just was blown away. And I was also so impressed with how many of you care deeply about the subject of keeping kids safe from predators. Sometimes I worry because there's a lot of negativity to this. People say, how do you do that all day long? Well, I can do it because I'm the solution. I do the research. I'm a law enforcement trainer. I can train the people that are out there on the front lines. And more important, we can train our kids and our parents and our grandkids because, quite frankly, online child sexual exploitation absolutely does not have to happen. It is my experience that if people will explain to our young people, well, first you have to explain it to yourself, okay? But if people will explain to our young people how the internet is made and where naked photos go when you hit send, that most of our young people will not be sending those photos. They simply don't have a vision for what is happening. We put our kids online and they think of it as one big social media experiment, one big game. And in many cases it is. I mean, look at TikTok. They make these videos, shoot them out there and off they go. And it looks like that. What they don't realize is they are the generation that's sending that out to millions of people who can text back to them. And we need to be able to get better at helping our young people understand who's a good guy and who's a bad guy on the air. And I think part of that is it hasn't been explained to parents. Whenever I talk to kids, I say, first thing they're going to do to you, 
when you meet up, they'll send you a Snapchat and you respond to someone you don't know, even if it's consciously. Next thing you know, you're over on Instagram or you're on TikTok and they like your video. They'll say, meet me on Instagram, get me more of those videos. And, you know, I'm going to make you famous. That is the first sign you're talking to a pedophile. They will move you from one app to the other. And the reason they do that is twofold. One, they're making sure you're not law enforcement trying to trick them. And number two is they're verifying that you're willing to be available and vulnerable because you are following them over there or flirting back. And that's exactly what they're doing is they're testing out our kids and we need to prepare our kids for how it works. We're up against that break. I'll be right back. Listen up, folks. You no longer have to drive out of the IE for a great restaurant experience. The Toasted Barrel, an upscale casual steakhouse located in Corona, has been winning award after award for their great diverse menu, service, ambience, wine, and cocktails. Customers call the barrel the perfect date night. Inland Empire Magazine has awarded them Best Restaurant four years in a row. Wine Spectator recognized the Toasted Barrel's wine program for their award of excellence. Toasted Barrel is famous for their certified Angus beef, prime, wagyu, and Kobe steaks, and they have some of the best pasta and seafood around. With happy hour and daily specials every day of the week, their appetizers and drink selections are the best around. Live music starts every Friday and Saturday at 5.30. Planning a dinner party, wedding rehearsal, family gathering, or holiday party? Look up Toasted Barrel online and make your reservation today. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. I want to tell you about a book I wrote called Seduced, The Grooming of America's Teenagers. It's all about how predators access, groom, recruit, and exploit our young people using social media, online gaming, video chat rooms. Technology is changing at the speed of light, and we have to understand how to keep our kids safe from predators. So you can get this book by going to www.meandkids.org. It's $16, I'll sign it, and I'll ship it to you personally. We hope that you will order this book, educate yourself about how to keep our kids safe in this day of changing technology. Join us each Saturday for our radio show at Exploited Crimes and Technology at 3 o'clock on AM 590, The Answer. Real estate sales in the Inland Empire are really hot. Sellers and buyers recognize that these low interest rates will not last. Sean and Colleen at Caldwell Banker Armstrong Properties in Riverside are proud to sponsor this show. They are the best in the Inland Empire. They're fair, honest, creative, and they care about you and your situation. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, call Sean and Colleen at 951-529-4066. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back. This is Opal Singleton. This is Exploited Crimes and Technology. And we are talking about how much fun I had this weekend when we first met you all. Uh, And it just blew me away. So I want to continue sharing with you what to share with your kids. That's one of the first things that people come up to me. They say, what can I do? Well, there's several things you can do. You can educate yourself and educate your kids and grandkids while you're doing that. Your first thing, your grandkids or your kids are going, oh, it's going to happen to me, mom. You know, I'm smarter than that. Yeah, really? Let's talk about that. What makes you so darn smart? How would you be able to tell? Ask them, how can you tell when it's a good guy or a bad guy? One of the answers to that question is that they'll start to do all the question asking and you're doing all the answering. Why does that matter? Because you're talking to someone you don't know. Now, I believe wholeheartedly that you should at least be old enough to have the sex talk before you're put online. That's the first thing, mom and dad, what can you do? Have a realistic sex talk with your child before you give them a phone, because they're going to meet millions of people who are going to have that sex talk for you. And it may not be the one you want. So that's one of the first things to ask. And second of all, if they're not old enough to understand 
adult sexuality in a healthy and and uh, appropriate sense, then they're probably not old enough to go online. Because the truth of the matter is, is that every little kid, five, six, seven, eight years old, is better at technology than you are, mom and dad. And you give them that technology and they are going to outsmart you And you are not going to realize what's happened because that kid is going to get a video that they know is funny and they know they probably shouldn't be looking at it, but they're not going to show it because they don't want to lose the phone. And that video may be of two little kids playing house, if you get my drip, mom and dad. And that little seven-year-old kid is giggling on it because, you know, when somebody wants a picture of their pee-pee, that's bathroom humor, and they start laughing, and they want to impress this guy or whoever they're talking to with how good they are at technology. And it must be okay because the guy sent him a, them a photo of other kids doing it. So before you'll even know what happened, I see cases all the time where mom and dad don't realize this kid is eight years old. They're on Uvu. That's like, you know, Skype, or you bet you don't even know what Uvu is, mom and dad. That is just like Skype or, or Zoom or one of those. And there they are, eight years old, Uvuing with strangers, or they're live streaming with strangers in a chat room. And guess what is happening? They're moving them around from app to app that you're not smart enough to know how to find them or how they operate. Even myself, I don't tweet. Somebody tweets for me. If you get a tweet from me, tell tell Chris Kleiss thank you because I don't know what I'm doing there. He's helping me out. I'm no different than all of you. These kids stay right on top of technology. So one of the things in, in your conversation with your kids is, hey, you know, you think you're so smart. You know, how are you going to tell me? How are you going to tell if this is a good guy or a bad guy? If they're doing all the question asking, do you realize they know all about you and you don't know anything about them? And you probably can't even verify who they are and what they're really about. Can, can you Google them? Can you see their background? Can you can you do any kind of testing? How about if they tell you, don't tell? I'll tell you, I tell kids all the time, somebody tells you don't tell online, you go and tell everybody you know. That's how you keep your freedom. Because if you don't tell, they're putting you in a little box where they have all the control. If you can't be proud of who you are and what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing it. And that's another sign that's out there that these are not good guys. So what can you do, mom and dad? Educate yourself. I have a couple of books, I'll say you for what it's worth. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders, A Home Without Walls, and also my older book, but still very, very relevant, is Seduce the Grooming of America's Teenagers. It talks all about how this is a relationship. You see, you think somebody's going to come on and either try to kidnap your kid or come in and uh, talk dirty to your kid or immediately send you a naked photo. Well, they can. The more hardcore pedophiles do that. But there are whole ranks of guys who are really slick. By the way, there are female child pornographers who do this to young guys also. And they will lure you into what you think is the most wonderful relationship about to happen. And everybody gets all excited because everybody's in love with being in love. And we've all been there in our life. We all want what we want, what we want and we all love a fantasy relationship. The problem of it is, is this generation is meeting people online or this generation are meeting, no, is meeting people online. need to clean up my English, thank you. They're meeting people online, and they're getting a fantasy relationship. And I can tell you that case after case after case where a young person sneaks out to meet up with one of these people, they have no intention of running away. They have no intention of getting raped. They have no intention of it going wrong. They're in a fantasy and they just want to see what he's like. And they will get in the car and they pull a gun on them and poof, they're gone. And that's when I start running million kids 
missing kids. And if you don't sign up for those, if you're not getting those, please do that. Go to millionkids.org, sign up for insider alerts and sign up for those million kids, missing kids, um, newsletters that are coming out because we need your help. We've been involved in bringing a lot of kids home. Think about what that's like for mom and dad. Well, mom and dad are out there and they don't know if this kid's in Vegas or Tijuana. Their kid is gone. And that is the loneliest place in the whole world. When your 14 year old kid is poof, gone one day and you don't have her phone, you don't have his phone, you don't know who they're talking to, you don't know who they met in a video game, they don't know if maybe they're sending a list of photos and being blackmailed, or if they're being put out for forced prostitution. You don't know. And that's why Million Kids exists, because we take those calls, we hand out those Million Kids flyers, we do that education, and it was a pleasure to meet so many of you this weekend. So that's what I share with you when you say, what can I do? Educate yourself about this. I get it that it's not pretty. I get it. But also, you're the solution. You can keep your child or grandchild from going into it. And okay, maybe you have to jest with them for a little while. Okay, Grandma, you know, you're still on AOL. What do you know? I get it. I get the whole inference. But if you will start to educate yourself and have healthy dialogue with your child, you will be able to do a lot more to protect your kids. And that's why we do what we do on this channel. That's why we want to educate you. Now, there's something else you can do that I hate this part of the business, okay? I'm going to just be right up front. But there is some legislation going on in our state that just scares the living socks off me. And there's some there's some legislation that's already been shot down and there's some new stuff coming. And I'm going to ask you over the next two sections of this radio show, if you'll stay with me a little bit, I want you to understand something else that you can do to begin to help us all. Many of you uh, helped us with SB 1042. I'm going to tell you right now, it never got off the ground. It was shot down by Senator Weiner. Right off the bat, not just him, but his two buddies. And I am proud of Senator Bug, who went up there and fought for that bill. Do you know that all of you together brought in over 3,000 letters of support for Senator uh, Shannon Grover to go out and, and um, produce and support that bill? Now, it didn't have a shot. It didn't have a prayer. But we made our voices known. Over 100 people went to Capitol Hill and about 75 people stood in line uh, on their on their phone so they could be heard over uh, the Internet so that people would know that it was there. So I'm very proud of uh, Senator Bogg and uh, Shannon uh, Grover for getting that out. It is a Grover, Grover, I forgot. I'm going to look that up uh, at the break here. But I am proud of them for standing up, and I am proud of you for giving us letters of support. I am not an activist. It, you, you may find that interesting, but I'm not. But when you're starting to see what is happening in our state, I need to take off the gloves and Get over it and start getting out there and doing the hard work of protecting our kids through legislation. This is Opal Singleton. We'll be right back. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by Internet, more than 6 billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. 
Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and I'm sharing with you what you can do to help keep our kids safe from predators. So there's a lot of things you can do personally, things like educate yourself, follow this radio show, share the radio show. It is all archived at millionkids.org. That's not .com now, that's millionkids.org, .com, some rock band I don't recommend. But anyway, um, follow us, you know, sign up for our newsletters, educate yourself. And, you know, share that with others. But the other thing we need, and I will tell you that I am the last person to really want to do this, but we have to stand up in California and get some decent laws through. So I'm going to talk about some laws and give you the background of what's happening. And there is a new one coming out that I'm going to ask you to get involved with right now before even I'll come back to it at the end. But if you have a pen and paper, write it down. It's AB2223, AB2223. Now, this is a bill about abortion. And there's a lot of misinformation going on on both sides of the aisle. Imagine that, doing that. But I'm going to come back to that just in case, because I'm going to ask you this week, if you're any kind of activist or a mother or a grandparent or a father that is concerned about the laws in the state of California, I want you to go to Google and let your fingers do the walking on AB2553. There's a lot of information about. So I want to back up a little bit and paint some information for all of you about what's gone on. So what happened is we were proposing SB1042. By the way, that's Shannon Grove, not Shannon Grover. Shannon Grove wrote the bill, and uh, Senator Bogg out of Ukaipa supported that bill. Uh, basically, it had to get through the Public Safety Committee before it could even be sent to the Senate. And the Public Safety Committee is five to three, and uh, that meant that it had no prayer of getting through. What does that tell you? I am not a political activist. I'm not here to tell you how to vote. But when people are voting against what you believe in, maybe you ought to find out who's running against them the next time and make sure that you vote for someone that believes as you do, because these votes matter. Well, SB 1042 would have made sex trafficking, labor trafficking, any kind of human trafficking a serious and violent crime. It is not a serious and violent crime right now. A serious and violent crime in the state of California, I was looking at uh, this, I always do a lot of research on that, uh, the guys that's against the three strikes law, and this is a big deal going on in our law enforcement right now. If you uh, get a chance to talk to Chad Bianco or uh, DA Mike Hestron about it, you get their opinion. Uh, basically, it's a, a serious and violent crime in California carries the three strikes law. So let's say that uh, y- your daughter is uh, raped by a gang member carrying a gun. 
with the three strikes law in that case, they would also get additional sentencing for being a gang member and additional sentencing for carrying a gun. But there are very few serious and violent crimes in the state of California. And so this bill SB 1042 was developed with the idea that uh, if you are a victim of human trafficking, that it would be considered a serious and violent offense and that you would um, be eligible for the three strikes law in sentencing. And it was a non-starter. They all voted against it. So I first want to thank all of you who went to all the effort to do what they need to do to try to get that attention. They're not, we're not through trying on that, but it needs to happen. So let me give you some background of why this is so important. What happened is in Proposition uh, 57, way back in 2016, it was voted by the voters, but there was a lot of information that was not given to us. That was under Governor Brown and the Attorney General was um, Kamala Harris. And that bill came through and it didn't say whether or not child sex crimes would be included in that. And what they did is they got everyone, they spent millions of dollars to get everyone to pass the bill that says that you could get out of prison early if you're a nonviolent, non-serious offender. And your average person just assumed that child sex crimes and human trafficking and things like that were violent and serious. I mean, let's face it, the, these people get seriously violated. But that was not true in the penal code and still is not. So this was an attempt to come back in and try to qualify human trafficking so that you would have a three strikes act. And I mentioned it the last time on the air. I'm going to say it again. What what happens here? Let me give you a real life experience. That Sacramento shooting about a week ago where this guy went in and a bunch of them, it was a gang shooting where f- six people were killed and 12 were injured. And one of those people in that shooting, Smiley, Smiley something or other, uh, just got out of prison. And he had a 10-year sentence for what should have been a violent and serious offense, okay? He went in with a prostitute, beat the living daylights out of her, smashed her face into the to the automobile, pulled her by the hair, slapped her around. I mean, this woman was seriously abused. Now, he'd had a long history already of being arrested with uh, assault weapons and automatic weapons and drug offenses and gang offenses. But this one here, he was uh, finally went and got 10 years in prison for assault. But that is not a serious and violent crime. So having served just a little over four years, Instead of his 10-year sentence, he's now out early. Well, that is what is happening with Proposition 57, is what happened is that everybody assumed that sex offenders wouldn't get out early. But what happened is they began to let them out early, and the the, uh, corrections department came back and said, no, 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 you know, they, I don't think we should do this. And a sex offender sued the state of California. The judge, judge, Judge Alan Sumner up in Sacramento agreed with him and said, yes, you should get out early. You're being discriminated against. Be careful. Look up the judges that are coming up for election and find out how they vote. We need good history of how they voted on the various cases. And in this case, that particular appeal where they where Judge Allen Sumner said, yes, he as sex offenders can get out early. It went all the way to the California Supreme Court. Justice Sakaiwe came in and said he's absolutely right. He has been discriminated against and you cannot stop sex offenders from getting out early. Now, I'm going to say they all are, but up to 76,000 prisoners could get out early, just like Mr. Smiley up there. 
and 20,000 of them are potentially sex offenders because it is not a violent or serious crime that carries a three-strike rule. What you're seeing with many district attorneys and many DAs, not our DA, okay, not Mike Hestron, not the DA in San Bernardino, not the one in Orange County, but you are seeing a lot of DAs asking prosecutors to overlook that three strike rules on existing sentences, not to even go to the prison and represent them so that they can have a longer sentence. So they're looking at trying to overturn previous sentencing and making sure future sentencing does not get to consider as a serious and violent crime. So we need people like ourselves that will take the time to understand it. Well, that's the same kind of thing that has happened here under SB 357, which you've heard me talk about forever. It's called the California Safer Streets for All Act. And that is the bill that has passed the Senate and passed the Assembly is loitering. How do you like that? They're trying to eliminate loitering on Senator Weiner's desk waiting for Newsom's signature. It will legalize street prostitution, street and car prostitution, anywhere and everywhere in the state of California. That means acts of prostitution can take place in front of your home, in front of your business, in front of your school, in front of anywhere you are. And there will be nothing you can do. Law enforcement will not be able to intervene. This is Opal Singleton. Be right back. Custom Service Systems, a proud supporter of Million Kids, is a family-owned and operated commercial cleaning company servicing the Inland Empire and surrounding areas since 1974. CSS takes pride in their ability to maintain the business facilities they serve and their long-lasting relationships with their valued clients. CSS provides a variety of cleaning systems customized to client needs, including deep cleaning and disinfectant to be COVID-19 compliant. From basic office cleaning to windows and floors, CSS will clean up your mess so you don't have to stress. Custom Service Systems cares about families and communities and wants to give back. Custom Service Systems are proud supporters of Million Kids to keep kids safe from predators. If you need the best cleaning services for your business or corporation, contact Custom Service Systems at cssclean.com. Again, cssclean.com or call 951-781-934. That's 951-781-9345. You will know you found the best. Custom Service Systems. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Let me tell you about my friend Doris Anderson at Remax Realty in Upland. She is amazing. She's kind, she's patient, but she listens. And she's informed and she will help you with your real estate transaction in a way that works for you. Doris, in full disclosure, often supports the work of me and kids because she cares about young people. But she knows how to analyze a market, how to market a property, and how to find just the right transaction for both buyers and sellers. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate or invest in income property, contact Doris Anderson at Remax Realty 951-733-8899. That's 951-733-8899. 951-733-8899. This message is all about Million Kids, the organization that helps locate missing kids throughout Southern California and educates to keep kids safe from predators. Million Kids educates school administrators, teachers, parents, and teenagers how predators identify a potential victim and the methods they use to recruit innocent kids. BMW of Riverside is a proud supporter of Million Kids. Visit BMW of Riverside at the Adams Street exit off the 91 freeway or click bmwofriverside.com. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. We are talking about how politics affects crimes like child sexual exploitation and human trafficking. So SB 357 basically is history. It's lounging around on Wiener's desk, waiting for a time when Governor Newsom can sign it without a big uprising. Actually, I think there's more to it than that, but this is just my opinion. 
just to let you know. There's another bill that just got introduced. You see, SB 357 sounds like a human trafficking bill. And everybody goes, wow, don't you want our streets safer? And don't you want those victims of human trafficking to be protected? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. Those women and some guys are horribly abused out there. Now, do I believe you can be an independent provider? Yes, but I also think it gets harder and harder because gangs and cartels have taken over commercial sex. It's huge money. I, you know, when I do my training, I see sex trafficking rings that bring in $10 million, some of them locally here. That means that those people are subjected to sex acts all day long and they don't get the money. It goes out to cartels and gangs, and that is what is happening. So what is happening here is that SB 357 that is signed and on Wiener's desk basically will legalize commercial sex. Buried in the bill is a lot of funding, and I can't verify for sure how much, but some numbers like 30 million have been thrown around. You see, the ACLU is the people that is promoting SB 357 and now is also going to be behind AB 2553. Now, I know this sounds like alphabet soup, but bear with me. You can't do much about 357. I mean, we keep protesting. We keep telling them until it's signed, you know, that the public does not approve of this. But what they've done is included a lot of money to an organization called Coalition Against Sexual Exploitation. Excuse me, I've got that wrong. Coalition to Abolish Slavery and Trafficking. We know that organization as CAST. And CAST was a strong human trafficking advocate. But they are helping sponsor these bills because there's a lot of money in it for them. They're behind 357. And it's also now the new bill that just sounds ducky. I mean, it sounds cute, okay? That bill is called, where did I find that bill? I underlined it on here because it goes on and on. The California Multidisciplinary Alliance to Stop Trafficking Act. How do you like that one? So what they're saying is the California needs a statewide human trafficking task force to look into all the other task forces and all the other service providers and decide who's efficient, who isn't, who has best practices. And guess what? They're going to get a lot of money to do that. So they proposed SB 357. They're going to benefit nicely from it. The world thinks it's a human trafficking bill. And what it is, in my opinion, is a money and power grab to turn all of this over to the ACLU. So pay attention. I hope AB 2553 fails. I don't have a lot of hope that it, that it will, but I'm you're going to see me fighting that because there are a lot of fine service providers out there that just care about the victim, just care about wanting to do it right and get it right. So I'm going to unload one more boring thing on you while I'm here, and then I will begin to close out here. I've heard about a new bill, and I, you know, I don't have time for legislation most of the time. I'm just trying to save the world, but we have to save the legal processes that really protects victims and really protects our society and our young people, and we cannot be, you know, caught up and under the oppression of these one-way laws that are going to do nothing. If, when SB 357 goes through and you, law enforcement will no longer be able to intervene for the purposes of prostitution. You want to know how slick this is? Remember when I was talking about, uh, what was it, Proposition 57, and it didn't mention child uh, sexual exploitation? And child sex crimes didn't mention them. And, and Brown and the, the attorney general at the time are saying, well, you know, no, I really won't. I mean, surely it can't include that. And they knew good and well that it would include that because they're the ones that are writing the bill. Well, the same kind of thing we're starting to see here with this SB 357. They don't mention it says that law enforcement will not be able to intervene for loitering for prostitution. 
doesn't say if you're selling sex or buying sex or pimping sex. doesn't say. It just says they can't intervene for loitering. It means that all those illicit massage parlors, those girls are going to be brought out. By the way, I was I promised to mention that case, and I didn't. We got a big case out in the desert there where they closed down a Chinese massage parlor uh, where they were exploiting people right through the massage parlor. And I'm really, really proud of the team out there for doing it. They also had another uh, sex trafficking case where they uh, were able to arrest uh, someone with sex with a minor. But, you know, what will happen back to my bill, SB 357, is they will take the women out of the massage partners and put them on the streets because they can and they can legally. Well, I'm going to stop right there and tell you that if you have any interest in looking at legislation and what has to happen, please stop right now and look at AB 2223. Now, there's quite a bit of misinformation on both sides, most likely on it, but this is a bill about late-term abortion. Actually, it's not just late-term. It's after the child is uh, born, up to several days after the child is born. So the implication of the law, keep in mind Planned Parenthood is behind all this, the implication here is that women who have had a a, a stillbirth or they've had um, a bad pregnancy and lost the child or uh, like that, or they, they tried to abort the child, that they actually were charged with murder. And this takes away the ability to do that. It basically says that you as a mother can make decisions about your child's life, in some cases up to, I believe it's 27 days afterwards. And so I want you to look at this bill yourself. It basically takes the idea of abortion to some incredible length. And uh, I get, I get that mothers uh, lose babies and maybe there's a lot of questioning and like that, but they're using that story basically to kind of decriminalize a mother whose baby, uh, maybe she decided up to seven days uh, after, in some cases, after 28 days after birth, that she wanted to abort the baby. It also takes it to the point where she can not only go ahead and do that before and after, but that law enforcement can't intervene with that. And if they do, that she can sue. And the whole idea is so that you cannot charge people with those kinds of deaths that are related to abortion or um, a, a mother taking her child's own life uh, like that. So I want you, it's a new bill. It's uh, going to be, you know, tweaked before it goes too far. But I'm going to ask you, just go online. It's not hard to find it. Just go into Google and put in California AB, like boy or bill, Assembly Bill 2223, and read it you know, and post your opinion on it. Uh, you can write to me. My, my email address is opal, O-P-A-L, at millionkids.org, O-P-A-L at millionkids.org. Well, Mom and Dad, it was such a pleasure, Grandma and Grandpa, to meet you and know that, you know, there's a whole world of us out there that say we are not going to stand for this. We're going to be healthy and strong parents and grandparents are going to raise good kids. We're going to talk to them about sexuality and morality and, you know, online exploitation. We're going to understand this technology so we can raise leaders for the next generation. You see, I believe with all my heart how we get this right or wrong with this generation will set the stage for all future generations. And we have a right to be a parent and a grandparent, and we need to take the prerogative and the opportunity to make the most of that, and that includes with technology. And I'm sorry to say this, I know it's not much fun, but it also includes looking at some of this these laws and not just believing that little voter pamphlet that came out. Go on to Google and look at California AB 2223, and I hope some of you will be inspired to write to the congressman that's on there. Uh, by the way, you can do that. Nine, phone number 916-319-2015. That is Buffy Wicks. Give her your opinion. 
okay? I'd invite you to do that. 916-319-2015. See you next week, folks. Have a great week. Take care of your family. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by internet, more than six billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators.